Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. In today's edition, it's Strada Bianca 2024. 215 kilometers on today's race in Italy, and they've extended it more than 30 kilometers in the previous editions. If you remember last year, it was Tom Pickock that won solo, but there was a big time chase behind Tom Pickock where they were hot on his heels most of the way, all the way to the finish line. This year, we have Tade Pogaccio, the Slovenian number one ranked rider in the world, starting his 2024 season. Let me remind you guys, Remco Evnipol's already started dominating solo. Jonas Vinigo's already started his season for Visma Lisa bike, dominating solo wins. And so it's time for Tade Pogaccio, the Slovenian, right? But how do you really know how good he is? Well, if you follow Beyond the Coverage editions before Strada Bianchi today, I told you, Tade Pogacar was out training, doing big time climbing with behind the scooter and with his power meter reading stuff as high as 550 watts going uphill while he was shooting it with his camera, taking a picture so you know the kid's gotta have some form because he did 85 miles in three hours and 23 minutes. But how good is he really? Now, you don't really, really know, but you kind of know because it's Tade Pogaccia, right? Okay, in the interviews last night and early this morning for some of the riders, we know there's going to be rain throughout all, this, all day on Friday, which means that it was supposed to be drier today, but it ends up raining. It's going to be miserable wet conditions. It's 93 kilometers when the cameras come on, and it's UAE Team Emirates on the front. That's the Mexican rider there who started his professional season this year with UAE Team Emirates already winning at the Tour Down Under. Isaac Del Toro is his name. Just behind him is Tim Wellens, and we know he's on fine form because we saw him at the Classics at Kern, Russell Kearns, and Omlu Het Newsbond. So we know he's on fine form. The third rider, Tade Pagacha. But that's only three riders in a group of about 50, maybe 60 guys, but everybody's struggling. If you're sitting on the Chesterfield like I am, the first thing you want to see, what are the team numbers looking behind the three UAE Team Emirates rider and how strong is everyone looking? Well, Visma Lisa bike, they're the number two ranked rider in the world. So what are those riders looking like? They have at least four riders in the front group. Ben Tillett's there. The American Sepp Kuss is there. Christophe Laporte, the Frenchman. And Attila Walters is there. Four solid riders in this front group against three UAE team members. That's not a big time advantage, but they do have one more. Now we start looking at Enos with Tom Pickock. They had at least four riders in there. You saw Kim in there. You saw our Innsman in there. Tom Pickock, like I said. And then, of course, it's the American rider Magnus Sheffield that's in there that's having a spectacular Strada Bianca here in 2024. Now, 93 kilometers to go. And when you look at this, you know right away what the plan is from UAE team members. They're going to make it as hard as it possibly can. And what the commentators had told me from what they watched online before the cameras came on proper is that UAE team members have controlled this whole race. So let's back it all the way back up into the manager's team bus and start figuring out what some of the tactics would have been. Now, we know from previous years, since COVID started anyways in 2020, that the tactics have always been to race aggressive at the start, when everything comes back, race aggressive in the middle, and then race aggressive at the finish of the race. So with 93 kilometers to go and Monte Santa Maria climb section coming up, you know riders want to get a bit of an advantage because in the meetings, if you're Trek Liddell, you, they would have been sitting in the meetings telling their riders, okay, Quinn Simmons, we know you can't climb with the best at the finish of the race, so you got to get away somewhere. We don't want to send you up in the early break, but we want to send you away somewhere ahead of time of Monte Santa Maria so you can get a bit of a leap of a gap to go up the road. That's a great strategy. That's why with 90 kilometers to go, you see Quinn Simmons going up the road. I said it was a great strategy, right? It was a great strategy. If the attacks have all been brought back, it's starting to go curb to curb and you can't tell exactly what the MO from any of the teams are and the pace isn't going 100%. But that's not what's happening. UAE Team Emirates are on the front. They're driving full gas, and they have been driving full gas for more than 100 kilometers. So you know they're going to continue to go full gas. There is no reason for a knucklehead move that Quinn Simmons is doing here at 90 kilometers to go, going solo up the road for Trek, when he has another teammate back there in the form of Tom Squinch. Squinch has been riding great. We saw him put none other than Wout Van Aert under the knife when they're at Omlu Het Newsblong going up the climbs. So as I told you on Beyond the Coverage, you need to pay attention to Tom Squins. But up front, 
Quinn Simmons isn't paying attention. He's just doing what he was told in the bus, but the directors didn't tell him, hey, if it's going full gas, don't attack, because only knuckleheads attack when it's going full gas, because you can't go any faster than Del Toro's going on the front and Tim Wellens, and they're on the front, of course, for Tade Bogacar, who's going to go nuclear here in pretty short time. Now, they're at the front. Quinn Simmons has got about a 15, 20 second gap. Knucklehead move, as I told you. And then behind, you see Enos get on the front. Tom Paycock, he's sitting there just behind his teammates, Will, there of Kim. And he's there because they're coming into Monte Santa Maria. He wants to start at the front. Fantastic strategy here. They're not pulling UAE team members. They're just starting Tom Paycock, last year's winner, at the start of a very, very crucial moment here at Strada Bianchi. Now they go through the left for Quinn Simmons. He starts up the climb. And then just behind UAE Team Emirates, Tim Wellens is on the front with Tade Pogacar sitting second wheel. Isaac DeToro looks like his legs might be getting a little tired because he can't quite get to the front, but Tim Wellens got it all under control. They wrap up Quinn Simmons, and then they drop down the backside. What's happening when you're going down these descents, lefts and right turns on the slippery gravel roads when you're riding 60 to 90 or 110 PSI and your tires like possibly, I still have in mine anyways. As you're going down on these gravel roads, it's going to be slippery. It's going to cause gaps. That's what's happening. As you see Tim Willens at the front, Bogachar sitting second just behind him. That's the American Sepp Kuss from Visma Lisa bike. And Quinn Simmons is still near the front. Now, as you see Tade Pogachar, he's going to look left over his shoulder. He knows there's chaos happening back there. And he hasn't even started to pedal or even stress. He's going to wipe his sunglasses clean with his right hand there. Then he's going to accelerate right around the right side of Tim Willens and start his attack here with 81 kilometers to go. Sepp Kuss looks like he tries to follow, but only for about a half a second at the most. As the American rider sits up, the gap opens up there, and it's time to see you guys in the douches is exactly at this moment what Tade Pogacar is thinking as he's accelerating on the front. He goes up the next bump on the dirt climbs there and drops down the backside. Then when you look back there, who's chasing in the group? Well, that's Quinn Simmons, the American from Trek. This is another knucklehead move. You don't actually want to chase right now if you're Quinn Simmons. And you're like, Chris, of course you want to chase. You can't chase right now because Tom Squinge isn't in this front group. So when we see Quinn Simmons up there pulling full gas, you know without seeing Tom Squinge in this group that he's further back there chasing like crazy on the slippery lefts, rights, turns, descents before you start the next climb, which means he's suffering and it means Quinn Simmons, the American kid, who's already spent 10 kilometers off the front and now is on the front pulling everyone else for no reason at all. Well, you see the gap start to go out there, of course, to Tade Pogacar as he's gaining time on this group of what's left of about 20 riders at this moment with 80, 75 kilometers to go. Behind, Quinn Simmons sits up. He starts drifting in the back. He's getting dropped as the climb starts proper. And then you see Tom Squinch come up, and those two are having a bit of a conversation. We get a little bit further up the road. We're going to see the attack from Max Van Gills. Lotto Destiny. I told you guys it'd be Van Etvelt that was throwing in the tax for Lotto Destiny. But clearly, they got at least two riders going good because Max Van Gills is going solo. Not the brightest of the moves, but this is definitely still a better move than you saw with Quinn Simmons. If he can get up there, he's hoping that a few other guys would come up and then he can close the gap. Instead, he gets stuck out there for about 10 kilometers and he will get caught by the group. Now, in between that and right before he got caught, there was a crash. The crash was Quinn Simmons. He's on the right side of the gravel road there. Looks like he's talking in his radio because he's got his elbow lifted up there. He's going to go through a little water rut there from the rain runoff. The dirt's going to get a little softer and he's going to lose his front tire. He's going to crash and his teammate Tom Squinch is going to crash too. I felt a sad tear here for Tom Squinch because he's on fine form and he's already had to deal with his teammate not being able to help him earlier, chasing on the front of the gap on the front of the group when he's back there chasing in the second group, and now his teammate Quinn Simmons is crashing him. Now what happens next? Well, look out there on the right side of the road when Tom Squinch is falling off his bike. As he hits the ground, he's already adjusting his glasses, getting them set because he knows he's on fine form and Tom Squinch from Trek is absolutely flying in this early 2024 season. He rolls out of the crash, jumps up, grabs his bike right off the top there of Quinn Simmons' bike, throws a leg over it, and he's gone trying to make up the gap to the front group of about 15 riders who are tracing up front Tade Pogacar going solo with over a minute gap. 
behind Quinn Simmons, this is going to be the end of his day. Congratulations. The directors didn't prep you correctly for this race, and you didn't put any kind of thought into what you were doing with 90 kilometers to go when you attacked, and didn't put any thought into what you're doing going down the gravel descent with Tom Squinch in the second group back there as you're going full gas. Seems like the right tactic at the time, but it's an absolute knucklehead move when you're chasing, and you got your teammate back there in the second group chasing too. Now all of a sudden, Quinn Simmons is out of the race from the crash. Hopefully he's okay. But up front, what's happening to Tom Squinch? Squinch will take a couple kilometers to be able to close the gap back up to this front group. But he's on flying form, obviously, as he closes up to this group. Now the gap up to Tade Pogacar is still extending, and he's getting out to about two minutes. Max Van Gils, like I said, he's going to get wrapped back up. And with 60 kilometers to go, all of a sudden there's a stalemate. When I back the camera up just before 60 kilometers to go, all the way from the attack from Tade Pogacar, it was basically just Team Inos on the front with possibly one rider like our Ensman on the front. And of course, they had a little bit of help there from Kim Hyduck that was riding on the front too. But with the exception of that, they're not getting much help from any other teams, even though Visma, Lisa Bike, have four riders in this front group. Remember at the Belgium Classics when they had six riders in the front group and they were lighting everyone up? Well, now they only have four in the front group and they're not getting on the front at all. Sepp Kuss isn't looking fantastic. Ben Tulit's not on the front. Visma, Lisa Bikes, Christophe Laporte, the European champion, he's not on the front. And of course, Attila Walters is doing what he can to stay in the group but can't get on the front to help Enos. That means it's 60 kilometers to go. There's a stalemate. It goes curb to curb. See the picture from the back as all the riders are sitting up. They're reaching in the pockets. They're all trying to catch a breath because it's been full gas. But no one is helping Enos with that stalemate. All of a sudden, we start seeing attacks from Cosnefoy and Van Eltvelt from Lotto Destiny going up the road. Now we'll see a group of six. Then it becomes about 12. And when you start looking at these groups, look at the back of the picture. That's Visma Lisa Bike who missed this front move and they're still chasing to get back in. Now we're going to see that Del Toro has a bike change. When he has a bike change, he's coming back. And we see this is about 50 kilometers to go. Sepp Kuss is dropping out of the race, and he's not going to finish today's Strada Bianca, which means that Visma Lisa bike have losing force up front. That means, of course, Tade Pogacar has less guys organized back there chasing as he's going full gas up front. Now we're getting into about 40 kilometers to go. We start seeing that there's a crash coming into the right turn. That's Ben Healy from EF Education that's going down. I couldn't figure it out what caused it. I don't know if he clipped the pedal going through the right turn or somehow lost his back wheel for some reason, but he goes down hard just as we see two Lotto Destiny riders throwing in attack with Van Etvelt and Van Gils up there going full gas. Van Gils will continue solo up over this climb with about just under 40 kilometers to go. 30, 30 kilometers to go. It's going to be attacked from Tom Squinch. I told you he was on good form and he's a kid to watch. He's flying as he's attacking with 30 kilometers to go. And with 20 kilometers to go, he's going to catch up to Max Van Gils. But up front is still flying Tade Pogacar, who is on the pedals, never looking like he's suffering in today's Strada Bianchi, and always putting time into the group behind that's unorganized to say the least. As we see the two riders chasing, they're still not anywhere close to Tade Pogacar, but now it's just about 18 kilometers to go, and Thomas Pidcock, he's going to throw in his attack as he's trying to bridge up the one-minute gap to the two riders in front so he can battle for a podium spot. Behind that, it's devastated. Riders are blowing up all over the place. About three, seven to ten riders left in the front group. Christophe Laporte for the Visma Lisa bikes, the sole representation up there, trying to get some kind of result in the top ten for Visma Lisa bike. Up front, Tade Pagacar with 2.5 kilometers to go. It's a fist bump to the camera there as he knows it's time to win Strada Bianca for the second time in his career. As he goes up the last and final climb, he'll celebrate with high fives with the crowds and come all the way across the line with the arms raised, jump off his bike, start raising his bike and celebrate to the crowd a second victory here at Strada Bianca. Now, what happened behind with the two chasers? Well, the two chasers behind Max Van Gils throws in the first acceleration and tack with 700 meters to go, but we see Tom Squinch from Trek. He closes that gap, throws in his next attack, and he'll get second on today's Strada Bianca with Van Gils getting third for Lotto Destiny wrapping up some fine UCI points. Tom Pitcock will round out for fourth. And then fifth back there, Mate Mohoric from Bahrain Victoria to round out the top five here at Strada Bianchi. Now, why did it happen? When you start looking at all of the commentators discussing 
the tactics, they start talking about, well, why did you have to go from 80 kilometers to go? Well, ideally, Monte Santa Maria is an ideal place to attack to bring the group smaller, not to go solo, right? 81 kilometers to go for Tadej Pogacar is a tall order, even if his power meter was reading spectacular numbers in training while he's behind the scooter. 81 kilometers is a tall order. I'm sure the Slovenian, when he attacked, was hoping that, okay, the group is 20, 30, 40 guys big when the cameras come on, but he wants to reduce it because you only have two teammates, Isaac Del Toro and Tim Wellens. So if he got the, those two dropped, all of a sudden he could be outnumbered and be getting attacked left and right. So he looks back left over his shoulder, like I told you in the video already, accelerates. I'm sure he was hoping one, two guys would go with him. He'd have a three-man three, three man breakaway going up the front, and then he'd just dislodge everybody later on in the race. But once he starts going up the road, of course, the directors are watching the same cameras we are. They're telling him back there in the UAE Emirates car that everybody's toast. We already seen your power files training behind the scooter, so we know you can do 80 kilometers on your own. So he's going full gas to the line. Most likely, he wasn't thinking at 80 kilometers to go, and most likely the director sportees from UAE Team Emirates weren't saying, hey, we're going to win this with 81 kilometers to go. No, the idea was to reduce it, get it into a smaller group, make the race as hard as you possibly could with all of your teammates, which they did spectacularly. That's why the cameras came on at 93 kilometers to go. You see basically 50, 60 riders max, and then guys trailing off in ones and twos behind the peloton there. So when Tade Pogaccio accelerated, he's thinking, great, I'll accelerate, I'll bring a couple riders with me, like Tom Pickcock and maybe Sepp Kuss, and then I'll drop them later on in the race and this thing be wrapped up with my first victory here in 2024. Instead, he got a marvelous victory with 81 kilometers solo at Strada Bianchi to devastate the peloton here and send the markers out to Jonas Vinigo, Primoz Roglic, and Remco Evnipol that I'm here to win in 2024, so you guys better bring your A game. And we know Remco Evnipol has brought his A game. We know Jonas Vinigo has brought his A, a game. And tomorrow, we're going to start trying to figure out whether or not, if Bora Hansgrohe's new signing, Primoz Roglic has got his A game here in 2024. We could see some spectacular racing in the next week from Primoz Roglic and Remco Evnipol, but today we saw something stellar from Tadej Pogacar at Strada Bianchi that all of us are going to remember next time we've turned into the race for the 2025 season. We're going to be wondering, can, can Tadej Pogacar go from 100 kilometers out? Probably too much of a tall order. Either way, it was a fantastic day here at Strada Bianchi. Tadej Pogacar, welcome to the 2024 season. You are clearly on fantastic form, and everybody better be paying attention to what UAE Team Emirates have done. Because if you remember right, just a couple of videos ago, ago, just a couple of days ago in the videos, I told you they had 10 victories with six different riders, and now they got 11 victories with seven different riders. So everybody better be paying attention to what UAE Team Emirates have done today here at Strada Bianchi. And Quinn Simmons, even if they told you to go before Monte Santa Maria, if they told you to go, you don't go when it's going full gas with a team at the front, especially when you got a rider like Tom Squinge riding as good as he has been the weekend before up there at Omelette, Het Newsblown, and Kern Brussels Kerns. Biggest knucklehead move I've seen in the race today had to be that. The director sportiste from Trek letting him do it, and the young 22-year-old kid doing it and not understanding what the, imp what the complications would be if he goes up the road while UAE team members are riding full gas. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon.